he looked upon our ravaged work, and then her smile left behind the scornful words, you're so strange, and away from me she walked. I stood amidst the wreckage, and looking down, could not find myself looking back, and nothing would not come to me, and I was ever alone once more, and nothing was ever the same again after that. He couldn't contain his emotion any longer, and tears streamed down his face. Joe held the door open, and Mr. Galloway escorted his wife into the hotel. Master Galloway, please help me, Zachariah said, running towards him. Galloway set their trunks on the floor. Did my son hurt you? I told Henry if he laid one finger on you, I'd... He didn't hurt me. He lost me, Zachariah sobbed uncontrollably. I think of you waking there in your last camp, still far from the summit, knowing your body had given out, seeing your family and friends pass by, and knowing only your spirit could show you the way would lift you up into the ether where nameless peaks await. A bird called out from the depths of the canyon and a dog barked in the neighborhood over the ridge. Andrew dropped to his knees and covered his face with his hands. What have I done? He whispered into the darkness. What in God's name have I done? You got your mama's eyes. I do? Something tingly happens to me when he talks about my mama. I feel funny all over, kind of warm. Yeah, you do. Gray, he said, just like a wolf. Pain and no pain. And if that, as if that was the same as hope and hopeless, not going on versus not wanting to go on. Where do you get the wanting? Because I've run out of my supply and I don't want to go shopping again. The pages of the Facebook turn and young women look out at me, all of them with dramatic and satisfying facial features, the tranquil inhabitants of a decorator world, a place where the sound does not exist, a bone shattering under a thin layer of skin. I don't think that world has bag ladies either. Camilla Costancia de la Guidroni Alonso woke on the morning before her wedding still clutched by an old faded dream of rain. She still shivered from the thunder of a Catalan November downpour on tiled rooftops, the faint scent of damp stone in the stable courtyard. In the dream, the note from Galeno in his awkward school script read, I must leave you for my life. But this the meanness came through the slurred words, the meanness the boy had heard many times before and had told him not to cross his father. He had seen his mother try to stand up to his father only to end up in the hospital with a broken jaw and a busted nose, never to return home again, not only to get him. I got to change clothes, the boy said, and headed upstairs to his room. She reached up with the pliers, grasped the exposed half of the eight-inch nail that protruded like a singular antenna from the right side of his bare scalp and pulled. There was a shuddering sound like a finger across wet rubber followed by the faint report of air rushing into a vacuum. Then silence. No one breathed. I held his hand, still beautiful and large. He did not squeeze mine in return. I visit not for him, but so I can feel the lump of panic rise and know that I am alive. At twilight, we drove through a nasty patch of road where every species of bug struck like hail on the windshield. I could barely see through the splatters and wondered how Joe was faring with just one good eye. Can you see all right, I asked. He pulled on his headlights and switched on his blinker. I gotta do something, he said. Thank you for listening.